is the Bash Box the next Intellivision Amico? What is the Bash Box? I'm going to talk about it. So the Bash Box is being headed up by this guy. His name is Old Man Ruckus. He is basically the Tommy Tellerico, if you will, of the Bash Box. What I mean when I say that is he's the founder. He's the guy pushing this. He's also going on some YouTube channels and promoting this. And there's certain things he says that echo what Tommy used to do, like when he's on channels and people um, ask him like, hey, what about getting this game on the Bash Box? He doesn't say wouldn't it be something, but sometimes he does say, you know, I'll have my guy contact him or I'll call them myself and see what we can do. And of course, these channels tend to be friends of his that seems to be from the iArcade community. Uh, so they don't really push back at it. They kind of take it as it's going to happen, right? Like he's like, okay, we'll talk about this. And the, the, the host will get excited like, oh, that's going to be awesome. Even though it's not a done deal. And he doesn't really say, hey, well, hold on a second. I didn't say it's a done deal. And so anyways, old man ruckus, Bill McLaughlin, uh, from what I understand, I've watched several hours of interviews with him. I've listened to them over the past couple of weeks. And I'll tell you in a minute why I decided now to make this video. He is, from what I understand, he is retired military. He's even said he's retired. He doesn't need the money from the Bash Box personally. He just has to charge the price he is so he can pay his developers who's worked hard on the Bash Box, which I guess makes sense. And by the way, thank you for your service, being retired military. And he's worked with several companies in the home arcade business, like Arcade 1UP, iArcade, and Unico. Uh, who did like the mini Neo Geos recently and the mini Geo Home Arcade cabinets. And Unico apparently, even though it's not on their website, even though I haven't seen uh, anything from them, uh, Bill has said that Unico is the ones who are going to be manufacturing or selling or whatever the, the bash box and you'll be able to order it from their site. So we will see if that's the case. But what inspired me to do this is this tweet uh, I know Smash JT made a video about this a couple days ago when it came out, and that's kind of what brought it to my attention. So I did a thing today. Bash and Intellivision are partnering to bring the Amico, oh boy, <laughs> to the Bash box. The Amico storefront will have six titles for purchase on launch, and I'm trying to work a deal to get one packed in. And by the way, if I'm a pre holder, a pre order holder, I'm probably, of the Amico, I'm probably not happy right now because that's another nail in the coffin. If I'm an investor who invested in the Amico and now I'm finding out that another system is going to run the Amico and can serve as the Amico and use the Amico controllers and I'm not going to get a cut of that, theoretically, I'm probably not too happy about this. And there's so many problems with this and we'll get to that in just a second. So here's the Bash Box current website. It's nothing spectacular. They've, he's gotten some criticism for how generic it is. But basically this is an Android 13 uh, console and it uses the RK3588 chipset. What I heard is that I don't understand this myself. I'm not, this is not my area, but what I have heard is this is a powerful uh, chipset that if you want to make your own Android thing similar to this, it'd probably cost you half of what they're charging. And we'll get you to the price in just a second. But it's going to be indie focused. Uh, basically, kind of like what Tommy said, they're going to give indie developers a platform where they don't get lost in the shuffle as easily as on a Google Play or the PlayStation Store. At least that's what he says. At the same time, he says that um, it's going to be a stepping stone system so someone can get their indie game popular on the Bash Box, theoretically, and then use it to get someone like Microsoft to put it on their store. Hey, look at how well we did here. Uh, I don't know if that's how you want to promote a, st a system as a stepping stone. He even said like he wants it to be a stepping stone for people who work on the system, who work behind the scenes so they can in the future get better jobs and so it makes it sound like a minor league system to me. And do you want to invest in a minor league system? Do you want to invest in a system where the best games are trying to get on other platforms and the the best workers behind the scenes are want to get on bigger companies? I don't know. That's an interesting way to look at it. But that's what he said in some interviews. I admire, you know, that you want to look out for your employees and help them get better opportunities. It's just not something I would necessarily say out loud. You know, I want, I want my system to be the destination point, not a stepping stone. So a little bit of a, a, a tip there. So anyways, so the bash box, it's going to have certain games packed in. He hasn't said how many, uh, we'll look at some of those games and it's gonna, it was supposed to come out in April. Then it's been delayed to June and then it's been delayed 
to or to May, then to June. So we got the same kind of Amico delay thing going on to a degree as we do with the bash box. And so anyways, let's go on. So it, it shows some features, local and online multiplayer gaming uh, using Unico's global match, which I, I, I think I've heard of that, but I haven't really... I, re I can't find a lot on the internet about Unico's Global Match, you know, exactly what games apply to that. It's showing this Turtles game, which, by the way, he was streaming through Netflix. So this system, you can buy games off of Google Play, HIO. You can even stream games through Netflix, but it doesn't say this is from Netflix. So I think you should put a disclaimer where this is coming from. It's not a packed in game and it's not running natively on the system. One of the things he does promote is the idea that this is Google Play verified. So if you get a game off Google Play and for some reason it bricks your system, then you then you can like talk to Unico. You could talk to him. You could talk to Google Play and try and figure it out where if you bought a cheap Android box from China packed with a ton of stuff and you tried to run Google Play and it wasn't verified and it breaks your system, you might be out of luck. So like multimedia capabilities, that's something that we talked about back when the CD-ROMs first came out. Powerful gaming titles. So like he said, he wants this to be an indie platform thing, but then at the same time, he's also said he's talking to bigger companies about getting their games in. So it's like talking kind of out of both sides of your mouth. So if you want the bash box, it's going to be $249.99, $250 plus shipping due at time of shipment. They don't say how much shipping is. Right now you can pre-order one for a dollar. And I guess you pay the rest of one dollar to hold. Now, originally he was charging the full price, but I guess Smash JT and Retro Bro were talking to him about it, kind of criticizing him, and he decided to back away from that. And this is the bash box. It's this yellow little box. It's got a somewhat generic controller. He, now he said he picked the controller that would work with fighting games because he's into fighting. He likes to play online fighting games a lot. He's probably more into fighting than I am, but I see a problem with this for fighting games. Um, first of all, this is, this is the nitpick. I prefer the Genesis style where you have six buttons on the face, not four. I don't like to use shoulder buttons when using fighter, fighting games. So that's a smaller thing. But this D-pad, when I play a fighting game, I like a D-pad where there's no space in the middle. So if I'm doing half circles or whatever, my thumb's not going to slip. And there's a power thing. But there's that's all you see of the box. So for all I know, this thing, if it comes out, might ship, might ship in a brown box with no professional packaging. And there is, by the way, a chat live kind of thing you can do. But if you try to do that they will ask you for your information like email if you have questions and I don't want to do that. So let's look at the bash box features here. So the, we're going to look at this showcase in, in just a minute here. Bash box exclusive titles. Tell me, raise your hand if you've heard of any of these. Bash Sports Online Bowling 2024, Tank Bash EX, Heavy Metal Titans 4K, Zone Blasters First Blast, Zone Blaster, Driver's Edge, and many exclusive retro titles for sale only for sale via bash box global match so there's going to be retro titles that are exclusive and i don't know what comes how many games come with it i've heard various numbers from single to double digits it's not clear it's not on the website and let's we're, we'll look in just a second wait till you see these games wait till you see the games coming to to bash box New titles, new first and third party titles in development. By the way, a lot of these titles, from my understanding, or some of them may have came from the iArcade, which went bankrupt and now uh, out of business. I think some of the community are looking for the next iArcade, and some people are looking at the Bash Box as the kind of spiritual successor in multiple storefronts that you can use. And that's pretty much it for their website for this $250 system. So um, anyways, let's go on. We will get to the games in just a second, but we got, so I did a thing today. I'm partnering with Intellivision. They want to pack in one of the Intellivision games. Amico controllers are also coming, but not at launch. So he wants the Amico controller to work with Bluetooth. And he got um, some flack for that from different people. And also he had, a, this is from April. Sorry to write this news. We have to delay the bash box slightly. Now, there is no launch date on the website. So you kind of have to listen to what he says in different interviews, which gives the opportunity to change on the fly. 
Why isn't there on the website, why isn't there a list of the games that are going to be packed in the system? Why isn't there uh, uh, the, the specific date when you pre-order it? Okay, so they're delaying it from early May to early June to late May, early June. It's purely my fault. Overlooked while building the OS, something we caught in testing. I super apologize to everyone and rest assured we're fixing it. And namely how to have a packing controller without syncing before starting the OS. And I'm like, yeah, that should have been done first. But does does that really take that long to fix? And then who is manufacturing? Because like if you're having China, a factory in China do it, usually you need months lead time, you know, like three months, which would mean this couldn't come out until maybe July at the soonest. So I don't know. I don't understand unless they're already in the process of manufacturing, but they haven't shown that and all they have to do is update the system. I don't know. And, you know, I looked at some controllers that look similar to this, and you're probably looking at like a $10 to $20 controller. Okay, let's look at the games. Now, this is from a video called Bash Game Showcase 1. This is Bill. Billy did this himself. This is their presentation of the games, okay? And it's not super professionally done. I think he did this as himself, which, you know, depending on his experience with editing software and gameplay, I guess it's okay. But if you're selling a system you probably want a little better than this. And one thing I'll say right before I start these videos, two things. One, look at how much this text covers the actual gameplay area. If anything, you want to put it up here or make it smaller and lower so you can actually see this is covering some of the main gameplay area throughout this video. And there's like five or four games on here. So, and the second thing is this, the music he used had a lot of profanity in it. And if, if I'm a professional game studio, unless I'm just targeting a certain demographic, I'm probably going to make my video sanitary for anyone to use, to watch. So let's go ahead and look at some of this gameplay. I have to do it with the audio off. So this, tell me, t tell me, does this look cutting edge? Does this look like anything super special to you? Because when I see this, definitely feels like an indie game, but it feels like, you know, an early indie game, if you will. So we go from like a, almost a first person shooting to kind of a run and gun. And I like run and gun games. This game might be fun, but I don't know, like the way the graphics are, the way everything's done, it doesn't look super impressive to me. This is not a game that I'd be want, want to really play unless I could play it for free. Okay, so let's go to Zone Blaster First Blast, which to me looks like a Roblox game being played on very low resolution details and it's kind of tremors. You shoot these worms and it looks like you're using a cursor, which I guess is the controller. I don't know. That's his cursor. He might be using a mouse. I'm not sure. This looks like it should be a light gun game. I don't understand. And it doesn't look like anything special to me. It looks like it's a kind of an on rail shooter, if you will where you just go kind of like Virtual Cop, but I mean, Virtual Cop came out how long ago and this doesn't look as good as Virtual Cop to me. You can let me know if you disagree in the comments below. So here is the PS de Resistance, the main game. I guess this got some popularity on iArcade. It's Bash Game Studios' biggest game. It's Bash Sports Online Bowling. This is, uh, I guess, version three. And it's kind of kooky, reminds me you know, of some, some little, a little bit of like a Fortnite kind of dancing thing going on. But watch this. Watch the pins just disappear. Look how long it takes. This is real time. Bam. And then they just set up. And I've seen 16-bit bowling games where they can actually, you know, have the little thing come up and sweep the pins and set them down. Oh, and you can use a rocket launcher. So I guess that's the hook of Bash Sports Bowling. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. And then during this video, they also stop and start the screen grabs. Jungle Challenge, which looks like a ripoff of Pitfall. And if you watch it, this looks like a bad Flash game. I'm sorry. It just does. This is what you're doing. Because if you look at it, when he jumps up, it like misses animation. So let's see if I can. Do you see what's happening there? Let me go. I'm going to go really slow. So let's go here. So when he jumps up, there's like a missing animation going on. I wonder what David Crane thinks about this. You know, you think I'm all for indie developers, but ripping off someone else's game, I'm not so comfortable with when this is clearly just Pitfall. This is just Pitfall. And watch him just kind of 
just hit it weirdly. And this death animation, watch this. He hits the pool, somehow he jumps up, he touches the rope, and he's dead. He disappears. How did that happen? Can we go back and see a replay of that? So, it's so crazy. So, here we go. We're going to jump up. Okay, I guess we hit the pool. We should be dead. But somehow we jumped up, we turned in a weird Superman pose, and now we're dead? That is just insane. And that's the. And then it cut, shows you the... At the end, it shows you the end, um, him cutting off the, uh, look at that, cutting it off right there. But I mean, this, did you see that jump there? I mean, it's just like, it's missing animation cells or something. So those are the games. That's the first showcase. Is this exciting you for a $250 system? So this all led to some criticism. A month ago, Smash JT made a, a video called The Bash Box Scam. He basically said, this is the Amico. This is a scam. Um, I wouldn't go as strongly as he did and say that this is a total scam. It seems like this could be a genuine product. Like Tommy Tellerico, he is putting his reputation on the line. So if they delivered it, it might not be a scam per se, where people are losing $17 million of investors' money. I am glad that he took the pre-order requirement of paying it all down up front to, Hey, like you can only put a, a dollar down, but, and he's not exactly Tommy Tellerico, but there's definitely some things that concern me. And I want to talk about this in a second too, this Rexer Rexer show video, but anyways, so he posted the video and what did Tommy used to do when someone criticized the Amico? He would try to reach out to them. He would try to make them on their side. That's what he did to Smash JT. And that's how he got $10,000 from Smash JT to invest in it as he became buddy buddy with them, had him over at his house, uh, kind of schmoozed him into saying this is a good thing, changing his opinion on it. So old man Ruck has tried to do the same thing. He made a video talking to Smash and he said, hey, I, and he, it sounded good until he took a wrong turn. And I'll tell you the wrong turn. So he's like, hey, this is, and you can watch this video for yourself. It's called Old Man Ruckus versus Smash JT. And he says, hey, I understand you got burned. I understand why you'd be sensitive to this. You lost $10,000. Here's what I'm going to do. When it comes out, I'm going to give you a bash box and I'm going to try to get oh, Amico home. I'm talking to them. I'm going to try to get Amico home on the bash box, which it should be able to run anyways to a degree because it's an Android box. And if an Android box is powerful enough, it should theoretically run Amico home, get them. And when they get a controller, I'll get a Amico controller and send it to you. And you don't. And, and, and to Billy's credit, he says, Hey, you could trash it, but I want you to try it. So he hasn't taken any money from smash. He hasn't asked for thousands of dollars of investments, but when he said he's going to partner with Intellivision, that's when red flags went off. It's like, why in the world would you partner with them? And when he was criticized for this on Twitter on X, he said, Hey, I understand people lost money. I have no part in that. I just want to put more games on the bash box, but it's like, you want to put more games and you're talking to them about bundling a game that are most people say are overpriced. So that makes me suspect, you know, your kind of opinion, your ability to judge the value of what you're including on the bash box. I don't know. Why would you want to work in the current television, by the way, they're still censoring people. They haven't talked to their investors who gave them millions of dollars. There's still people like Mad Max, from what I understand, a big supporter promoted them on YouTube, still waiting for their pre-order deposit refunds that they requested. And they ghosted people on their official discord. If you ask about refunds, they'll just kick you off. So you want to partner with those guys. And then this, I think this happened before Smash JT, the Rexer show. Uh, when, let's see, it says new ga gaming console, a bash box gaming game console. Why does nobody care? This was a couple months ago. They showed that it looks like on Facebook, Bill said, now he's apologized for this. And I believe taking this post down, but it looks like it was from Facebook. Can everyone on my page shoot dislikes to this dude? I don't even interact with this guy. He's just legitimately, oh my goodness. Please tell me this isn't happening again. A hater. Tagged to the pettiest of revenge seekers for me. Now, I've talked to people who were involved in the Intellivision Amico. They used to be pro Amico. And Tommy Tellerico would tell them, hey, go leave dislikes. Go to the comment section. He wouldn't do it publicly like this, but he would tell them, 
send them out like little minions to attack critics. And again, Bill has apologized. Tommy never apologized, I don't think, for the way he talked about haters. At least not, not that I'm aware of, not legitimately. I think there may have been one or two times where he kind of addressed it. But still, that's red flag material right there when you can't listen to criticism. And then, of course, uh, Smash made a video a couple days ago uh, in Television Amico Partners with the Bash Box where he's basically dissing that. And Old Man Ruckus on Twitter got quite a few people saying, bad idea, you don't want to associate with the Intellivision in any way, shape, or form. Are you? And that's a legitimate thing, but he keeps kind of dusting them all. I'm no way in advocating what happened. There didn't happen for me offering more games, giving people a chance to experience what should have been is never a bad thing. I haven't taken any back or money other than the original pre-order. So this is me putting my mo my money on it. But here's the deal. If he makes a deal where somehow they're promoting each other or he makes a deal where he's paying them to bundle a game, that's enabling. That's, that's basically saying I approve of what they recently done when they're still in the middle of it, when they still owe refunds that, that haven't been refunded yet, when they still owe in my opinion, morally owe investors an update of what's going to happen. And should the investors be getting money from Amico Home? Should investors be getting money from the sales of BBG Entertainment? I don't want to do that. And, oh, wow, this is something. I believe this is from the Intellivision Amico Facebook group. John Alvarado said, just to clarify, Bill McLaughlin has used the term partnering in a generic way here. And television has no formal business partnership with Bashbox. So it's like what Tommy would do when he, when he called someone a partner, but they're not really partners. When he said, hey, we're partnering with Crayola, and Crayola's like, you're just running a room to show off your stuff. We're not really partners. But we are discussing an Amico Home bundling deal. And, he's, and then he goes on to kind of glowingly talk about the bash box, how like other Android devices, you should be able to use it with Amico Home and the Amico controller if it ever does come out, which, by the way, is supposed to be entering manufacturing soon, according to the Intellivision Amico roadmap. No word on that. We are happy to be working with Bill on a bundling deal and Intellivision will make a formal announcement of details if when the deal is completed. Oh, red flags, right? at least yellow flags, you should be cautious of this. I'm not saying that this is, again, this is not the same level of the Intellivision Amico. Bill hasn't taken $17 million of investors' money. And from what I understand, the people who did pay for everything up front were given an opportunity to get a refund and got it if they wanted it. And now they only have the $1. So there's not, it's not the same because the amount of money involved. And this could be a legitimate thing. This could come out in June or by the end of the year. And e even if it does, is it worth the price to get, to get basically what you're paying for is for someone else to set up your Android device for you and ease a play to be able to go to Google play and download stuff and get these games. But I don't see the value for me personally at this time. I don't see what's so exciting. I know the, seems like the main target is the home arcade community, uh, he hasn't said like, this is going to disrupt the market and we're going against, you know, other competitors. Like he didn't say anything like that. So it's not the same level, but there are definitely some red flags. There's definitely some, or at least some things to be cautious about some things I would recommend. It doesn't look professional right now. The, the website, the trailer doesn't look professional. The games don't look even that great. Maybe they're fun to play, but just looking at them, it reminds me of like flash games from 10, 20 years ago. So I definitely think Bashbox has a lot of work to do to look to justify the price they're asking. At least that's just my opinion. So they can prove us wrong. And if I made any in any errors, according to what I understand about the Bashbox, I invite them to let me know. But this is I've watched several hours of uh, interviews. This is the impression I get. And it's not uh, a great impression. And so, again, I would just recommend personally. Wait and see. Wait till this thing actually comes out. And I'm telling you, man, don't associate with Intellivision. There are people who are going to just dismiss the bash box immediately. It's going to drive people away because it's associating with the Intellivision brand. There might be a few who's like, oh, I'm going to buy this right away. I already pre-ordered it. There might be a few diehard supporters, but I don't think the amount gained is going to be greater than the amount lost. At least that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you next time.